What tool should you have in your toolbox? You'll find out right after this. Hey everybody, I'm Taylor from Beard vs. Geek, where I show you it is okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. Today we are in the shop and we're talking about tools. Now if you're just starting out on your tools, here are seven tools that you must have in your toolbox. First off though, as far as toolboxes go, you could go with one of the traditional metal guys that you carry around. However, I would recommend one of these. This is a big mouth bag, so it's very easy to access all of your tools. They hold more tools than the conventional toolbox, and they are very durable and inexpensive. I would also recommend a good pair of work gloves. You can find these at any home improvement store or online, and they can really save you a lot of blood. So go ahead, put those in your bag. Now, if you have a house, if you have an apartment, if you own your own boat or your own ranch, these are some tools that are going to come in very handy. So even you apartment dwellers out there, you should have these tools. First tool, a standard Phillips head screwdriver. Now a Phillips head screwdriver has four points at the end of it. Uh, and this is great for dealing with screws around the house. I cannot tell you how many times I have used this tool around my parents' house or in my own apartments. So that goes in the tool bag. Tool number two is very similar. A standard flathead screwdriver. This comes in very handy, especially when dealing with electrical outlets. Uh, these are the type of screws that you expect to see as well as this is very handy around the house if things need tightening up. Even on your computer, a flathead and Phillips head screwdriver come in very handy. So that goes in the bag. Tool number three, the tape measure. Always use the adage, measure twice, cut once, especially since lumber is so freaking expensive. Now, in the USA, we have 25 and 30 foot long tape measures that are pretty standard. This is a 30 footer. Whoa. Tape measures come in very handy, especially since in, in the USA, it is standard building code to have 16 inches between the center of studs. Meaning that if you want to hang a picture, it is good to know exactly where those studs are. And you can measure that out with one of these. So this goes in the bag. Tool number four, an adjustable wrench. These guys have the little wheel in the middle of it so that you can easily narrow or make bigger the size of wrench that you need. These do come in kits of threes as well as individuals. However, the standard one that you will need is an eight incher right there. And it says clearly right on it, eight inches. And on the other side, it has 200 millimeters. So that is the basic wrench that I would recommend. However, you can get a set of three and it works just fine. Tool number four, a socket wrench. Now this comes in very handy with bolts around the car or I'm just working on a power washer right now and this has been the tool of choice. Now with a socket wrench on the back of it, it has this little lever that allows you to take a bolt out or to put a bolt back in. And that little button allows you to adjust the heads that you use. So you can use a 13 millimeter head, or if that bolt is kind of down there and you really need to get to it, you can get one of these extenders in order to access that bolt and get a little bit more torque. Now you can get a socket wrench set. In fact, I would recommend it because if you always have to go out to the hardware store and get these little guys every time you need a new one, it can be very annoying. So go ahead and get a quality socket wrench set. And those can be pretty inexpensive as well. Link in the description down below. Now, tool number six is pretty standard and you've probably heard people threatening to take their computer to it. It would be a standard claw hammer. Now, if you are doing any type of carpentry work, if you are fixing shingles on a house, if you are putting a nail in the wall so that you can hang a picture, you are going to need a hammer. These are very inexpensive. They're only about eight, 10 bucks for a good quality one. Uh, don't be intimidated by a hammer. It is one of the simplest tools out there. And um, later on, I'll do a video about how to not hit your thumb 
with one of these. But in the meantime, the hammer goes in the bag. And finally, a tool that you probably did not think of but is extremely handy, a level. This is uh, a pretty standard level. Let's see if I can actually get this level by hand. Look at that. Look at that bubble. Right in the center, right where it needs to be. Now, this level comes in extremely handy when you are doing any type of work around the house. Making sure that things are flat, making things that they look good, and line up well allows you to make better quality construction, and it allows you to actually hang those pictures straight instead of, instead of eyeballing it. Well, it's kind of something like, no. Get a freaking level and do it right. This costs a little bit amount of money, and it can save you a lot of problems. I have built brick walls, patios, hung paintings, all sorts of different things that needed a level. So, be a man, buy a level, do the job right. So there you go, men. There are seven tools that every man should have in his toolbox. I would recommend buying these tools at your local hardware store. However, if you don't even know where that is, I do have affiliate links in the description down below to all of the tools that I would recommend. And I would strongly recommend Craftsman brand products. They make very good quality tools that last you a long time and they're pretty inexpensive. And no, this video is not sponsored by Craftsman. That's how good they actually are. Remember to check out the affiliate links down below so you get to some good quality tools that I personally would recommend. And remember, if you like this video, you can always go ahead and subscribe. Great videos are coming out every week where I show you it is okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. You can also check out these two videos right here for some more manliness and geekiness. Because if the women don't find you manly, they should at least find you geeky. And until next time, don't go shaving on me.